Hello and welcome back. It's Johanna. I do not have any credentials and I'm just using the IB math book to make this video. So today we are doing chapter one. Yes, we went from six to seven to eight, now to chapter one. Um, as you can tell, I love to go in order, totally. So 1.1 is number patterns and sigma notation. So within this, you have to understand what a sequence is and what a series is. So a sequence is a list of numbers that are written in a defined order that follow a specific rule. In this rule, it could either be a decreasing or a increasing sequence, like the numbers could be getting larger or smaller, but anyhow, it still follows a specific rule. As an example, we can look at the sequence 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and that's where the sequence ends. Now, this sequence is increasing by 2 every single time, which means that it's following a specific rule. But not only that, it also has a set number of terms, like which can be seen by the fact that there isn't a dot dot dot, like three dots after the 10. This means that it's a finite sequence, which means that it has a set number of terms. It, it does not go on forever. Now, if we looked at a different sequence and there was a dot 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 after the last term, that would mean that it is an infinite sequence, meaning that it goes on forever. There is an infinite number of terms in this sequence. Now, when writing a formula for sequences, you use the term un. The un is the patterns of a sequence. These patterns look slightly different if the sequence is arithmetic or if the sequence is geometric. This is what we're going to talk about now. An arithmetic sequence is when the same value is added to each term to get the next term. In this example, a 4 is added each time to get the next term. A geometric sequence is when each term is multiplied by the same value to get the next. A recursive sequence is when you use the previous term or terms to find the next term. This is noted, or the notation for this is u n minus 1, because the n is what term it is, so the term minus 1 would be the previous term. So now let's talk about a series. So a series is created when the terms of a sequence are added together. There can be finite or infinite series as well. The same goes here if the dot 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 is there or not. That is the notation for whether it is infinite or not. So there is notation for this that you have to know, specifically the sigma notation. This is one of the letters in the Greek alphabet and is used to show the sum of something. So I have drawn it here. It looks like a weird Z. I drew it a little ugly, but you'll have to live with that. So the A I put is technically any number, and this is known as the upper limit of a series. So when you're plugging in the N in a series, like the term, this would be the term you stop at. So if it's infinite, that would be an infinity sign. But since this one isn't infinite, or in this example in the book, um, then you would stop at that number. The thing that I have circled is the actual example of a potential equation for a specific series. You would not have to, you don't have to memorize like that exact one. It's different for everything. It's just an example. The one, or in this case, the B, in the book it's a one, I put a B is the lower limit. So this is the first N value that is substituted in the general term. So if they're asking you to find the sum, you would start with the term B and then find all of them until the term A and then add that all up essentially. The n is called the index and represents a variable. The n just means a term, so essentially it's saying that b is a term. Yeah, I think you got it. So that was actually it for chapter 1.1. Now we're going to talk about chapter 1.2, which is specifically about 
arithmetic and geometric sequences, so not the series. So when looking at arithmetic sequences, there is a common difference. This common difference is noted as a D. This D is essentially the rule you are following, what you are adding or what you are subtracting from each term to get to the next. You can find this by doing UN minus UN minus 1. So that means you can do this by doing a term minus the previous term. So in any case, if you take this with real like term numbers, this would be, for instance, U2 minus U1 or U3 minus U2. So as I stated in the beginning of this video, you can have an increasing or a decreasing sequence. Now, if the D is bigger than zero, the sequence is increasing. If the D is smaller than zero, then the sequence is decreasing. By decreasing and increasing, I mean that the number is getting larger or the number is getting smaller or like each term is getting larger or smaller. Now, there is also a specific way you write the patterns you find within these sequences, which is un equals u1, so that's the first term in the sequence, plus the term minus 1 times the common difference. And then you could get the answer for any un term. So if you have those specific parts, you can create this equation. Now, if you talk about geometric sequences, they have a common ratio. The common ratio is noted by an R and can be found by taking UN and dividing it by UN minus one. So that would be taking a term and then dividing it by the previous term. So that could be U2 divided by U1, for instance. Now, if the R, the common ratio, is smaller than negative one or bigger than negative one, the, oh no, I wrote wrong in this. It's not supposed to be negative one, it's supposed to be a one. So if the R is smaller than negative one or bigger than one, the sequence is diverging. When writing an equation for the patterns you have found in a geometric sequence, you use the format un equals u1 times r to the power of n minus 1. So this would be the first time, first time, the first term times the common ratio to the power of the term that you're looking for minus 1, so the previous term. So that was actually it for 1.2 as well. Um, I will not be doing the quizzes in each individual episode this time, but I will do a quiz about all of the content in chapter one in the last video about chapter one. So if you want to test your knowledge and such, in that video there will be a quiz plus me explaining how to get the answers in the quiz. Like when checking the answers, I will explain how to do it correctly. So please like, subscribe, and comment. You can follow me at Johanna Frenert if you want. And goodbye. I hope you learned something.